Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. In this video, we're gonna talk about developing cadence on the handgun. A uh, quick definition of what I'm talking about. The ability to deliver a round every single time you have an acceptable sight picture, usually at closer distances. The further, further back we get, the more correction that needs to take place. So when I think about cadence, what I'm talking about is when there's still energy in the gun from the previous round fired. So very, very fast rates of fire. We're talking, you know, a, a magazine of ammunition and under, you know, depending on the shooter, uh, 17 rounds in under four seconds would be a very long string of cadence. Now, cadence serves two very distinct purposes. One of them is potentially very real world, the ability to get accurate hits very, very quickly at closer distances. The other purpose, and this, is, this isn't necessarily specific for red dot handguns, even though this is kind of the focus of this video is talking about cadence in relation to red dots, but this te these techniques also work for iron sight guns, is the ability to use cadence to improve your grip and diagnose your sight picture process. There's a lot that goes into shooting fast. So one of the disclaimers we have to talk about is if we're doing a high rate string of fire, so we're saying five, 10, 15 round cadence strings, that's not necessarily to replicate real life. So I wanna underscore that. If a bad guy is gonna stand still and let me center punch him 15 times, then that's the bad guy I wanna encounter. Chances are that's not going to be a thing, but it's very possible and it's within the realm of possibility. So when we do these higher, round count strings of fire for developing cadence and using cadence as a tool, it's not because we're expecting our bad guy to sit still that long, but if he does, it gives us the ability to deliver that many rounds in that short of a time. What we're working on is being able to shoot as fast as possible, not as fast as we can. Uh, I can shoot very, very fast if accuracy is not in question. So if we're just talking about as fast as possible, I'm gonna work the gun as fast as the situation allows me to shoot, which may not be very fast depending on the conditions, depending on the distance, depending on all the context that goes into what I'm trying to accomplish. But having the ability to shoot very, very fast is one good for those closer distance, if we're t talking about self-defense, close distance encounters, maybe I can get three rounds in the time, you know, uh, I wouldn't, I would have been able to get one round uh, prior to developing my skill. Uh, but it also gives us the ability, like I said, from diagnostic purposes to hone in and develop the skills we need to shoot accuracy accurately in general, because nothing is going to improve, one, your grip efficiency, and two, your ability to diagnose and track and work with your sight picture, be it a red dot or iron sights, better than cadence. Now the first step to developing cadence is to diagnose your default point of aim. Uh, I usually do this at three, five, seven yards because I consider those to be very common cadence distances depending on what my uh, acceptable area of accuracy is. Uh, I'm a firm believer in precision and practical accuracy and I apply those both to human anatomy type uh, context. So for me, precision is delivery of a round or rounds to a specific organ in the human body likely to a, a cause incapacitation. The brain stem, the heart. Practical accuracy is deliver of, delivery of one or more rounds to a region of the body likely to induce incapacitation. The cranial vault, the thoracic cavity. So that's my precision, that's my practical. As far as targets go, I use a very specific target almost exclusively. There, there's two different versions of them. One's a cardboard and the other one's a, basically your, your poster card or poster stock um, two-dimensional white on black overlay or black on white overlay. And it gives me an A and a B and then the rest of the target is pretty much a C zone when we're talking thoracic cavity. Uh, you may be familiar with the terminology of A zone, B zone, but what you'll probably notice about this target is the A zone on this target is considerably smaller than what you see from some of the competition-based shooting targets. The A zone is actually four inches by six inches or six inches by four inches, depending on how you want to look at the measurements. Uh, and it gives me a very reduced size A zone that's very similar from a front presentation anyway with a two-dimensional distortion of the human heart, at least in that thoracic cavity. And the B zone is my my overall thrust cavity, anything out of, outside of that is generally to me not an acceptable hit regardless of what I'm doing. So those are the accuracy standards I work with. Now, when I start developing my cadence still, I've got to see what my default point of aim is, but I also, with the red dot, I want to see what kind of movement I am experiencing while I'm tracking uh, reset on target. So my default point of aim should be where I want my round to go. That's where I'm going to press the gun out to. That's where I want to get my hit. Your default point of aim should not change regardless of how fast you expect to shoot or the distance you expect to shoot from. So my default point of aim is generally middle to very high in that A zone, that four to six box. So we're talking about half up uh, or one third up, depending on how close I can get to the target. But it's still gonna be center of that uh, target offered or selected, so center of that A zone. As a diagnostic process, something I do, and I don't just do it once, I do this periodically to see if there's improvement. I'm checking my 
overall improvement in my skill set, if you will. I'll take a 10 round magazine of my chosen defensive ammunition, because I want that full power recoil for defensive purposes, and I'll choose a point of aim, I'll usually draw like a little, uh, little black mark inside that A zone, and I'll fire one round. Now wherever the dot or the irons, wherever the sights settle to, I'm not gonna make a correction, I'm gonna press that next shot. Then I'm gonna do it again, and again, and again, and again, and again, 10 times while focusing on that black dot as my desired point of impact. But what I'm seeing is how much travel takes place in my sight picture. So here's that group you watched me shoot. Uh, it's 10 rounds, I was shooting it from three yards, and of course I'm not in a hurry when I do this diagnostic. The whole purpose behind it is to see how much travel my dot placement or my dot settling has from shot to shot to shot to shot. Because I'm using my eye-hand coordination with the red dot, we're not ta specifically talking about iron sights. Iron sights, you'd have to reaccommodate different focal planes to accomplish it. One of the reasons why the red dot's just a better sighting system in general. Uh, but talking specifically about the red dot, I'm staying target focused the entire time through my cycle of fire. Those small corrections that you, we generally make are made unconsciously depending on your level of competence. If you're a newer shooter, you're probably consciously making those corrections. If you are a more experienced shooter, that unconscious competence is gonna cause that natural default correction to take place, and you wouldn't necessarily notice, consciously, memorize that your dot had actually been where it could have put around there, it could have put around here, it could have put around here. As we speed up, this matters more because this was fired at a very administrative pace. There was no hurry, there was no rush. It's specifically for a diagnostic starting point to begin building cadence. So what this group tells me is there is some natural movement taking place, which makes perfect sense because I'm a human being, I'm not a machine. This does not mean that if I sped up necessarily, this group would open up, up and up, and up and up and up and up and get wider and wider and wider and wider, especially at three, five, seven yards, because I have a performance wall. I can only shoot physically so fast. I can only pull that trigger so fast. Uh, there's only so much deviation that can take place based on how fast I can actually shoot the gun. I am not the fastest shooter. There's a lot of guys out there that shoot, pull the trigger a lot faster than I can and shoot a lot better than I can. I'll be the first to admit that. Uh, I'm able to maintain the standards of accuracy I feel that are reasonable for what I'm trying to accomplish, but I'm always trying to improve myself. When I first started doing this diagnostic, every now and then my group would be completely outside of the A, even though it was vertically, it looked good, I always had horizontal issues. The biggest secret, for some reason, in accuracy improvement and diagnostics, when people look at bullet holes, trying to use bullet holes to help them fix what's wrong with them, is they tend to overcomplicate it. They start looking at like a wheel chart or some other nonsense that gets shared around the internet. Here's the basic advice. If you've got horizontal deviation from your point of aim, that's grip. If you've got vertical deviation in your point of aim, that's probably timing, but it's definitely sight picture related. Here's the next concept we need to explore before we actually get into working cadence and the skills that are behind that. So this is right here, my A zone, right? And you see that there's a hit, there's hits all over it. That's high accuracy, but low precision because the standard is this A zone. That's where I was aiming, right? So I've got really good accuracy. I, I met the standard every single time, but the rounds are not precise. And that tells a story about what could be going on in my technique. Over here, I've got 10 round, another 10 rounds. It's a very, very tight group. This would be very high precision, but low accuracy since it's not even in the A zone. And of course this was set up as an illustrative, but it proves a point. If you have a consistent deviation, that's better than having an inconsistent deviation. So if this is the group that you're shooting, it's a little harder for you to diagnose or to have someone else diagnose what's necessarily going on without a, th a third party or a second party, whatever you want to call it, observing you shoot. If you sent me a picture of this target and said what I'm doing wrong, uh, I'm not a Facebook group. So I'm not going to throw 95 answers at you and 94 of them are wrong. What I'm going to do is suggest you take a class. Now we got to get into the actual skill development. At what distance is cadence reasonable? Kind of a personal question. Three, five, seven yards, you should be perfectly capable of delivering rapid cadence fire to a reasonably sized practical point of aim or precision, depending on how hard on yourself you want to be. 
we have this desire in shooting to always shoot these super, super, super tight shot groups, which I totally agree with depending on what the question is. What are we trying to accomplish? If my goal is the A zone hitting a four by six inch box, then anywhere inside that box is a win. Granted, I still want that group to be as tight as possible, but if the goal is hit the A, then I'm gonna hit the A really, really quick. And for some reason, people have this dichotomy between how they do on paper and what they do on steel. Not everybody's like this, but a lot of people are. When they shoot on paper, they always want to shoot this super, super tight group, but then I watch them shoot on steel, and as long as it makes a noise, they consider it to be a win, even if they're hitting the edges of the plate every four or five rounds. So you need to have a conscious appreciation of what you're trying to accomplish. My goal is going to be precision accuracy at cadence from three, five, seven yards. As I move back further, I still want that A zone hit, but in order to be able to shoot faster, I may accept a wider dispersion of rounds. I'm not going to use terms like combat accuracy because it's nebulous. It doesn't mean anything. That's something that bad shooters use as an excuse for continuing to be bad shooters. I want to be able to deliver rounds to a practical or a precision region of the body at all times. If I can't get the shot, I shouldn't be making it. But if I'm working on diagnostics and skill development, uh, I've got to get on paper and I've got to make mistakes and I've got to push myself to go too fast so I know what too fast looks like so I know what my goal is. So just an example of me shooting today, I'm using a 19X, it's uh, had work done by Agency Arms. Big fan of the gun, it's got a compact length slide, full size frame, I'm using an RMR with a 3.25 MOA dot and I'm shooting 124 grain gecko ammo. I'll be shooting from three, five, and seven yards. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot a control group, which is I'm going to let the dot settle on every single shot. And then I'm gonna shoot a cadence group. And that means as soon as I see the dot in a reasonable place where I would accept a hit, I'm going to press the shot. So up first at three yards, here is my control group. Not a tall hill to climb, of course, three yards, shooting 10 rounds in a nice tight group. 4.88 seconds, which is a very respectable time. Could I have shot it faster? Of course I could, but that was a more administrative rate of fire, or say my point of aim was much, much, much smaller. But the goal was get it inside the A zone. So now I have a workable example, a control, a baseline of how long it takes me to fire 10 rounds while settling my reticle. Could I have shot a tighter group? The answer to that is always yes. I was allowing the dot to go back to natural movement and then I was pressing. I wasn't stabilizing beyond that, but that's my control. Now let's look at the another 10 round group fired from three yards at basically what I would consider a cadence rate of fire. The only, I'm pressing the shot every single time my reticle touches what's an acceptable point of aim for me. Ten rounds, 2.14 seconds, uh, less than half the time to deliver the same amount of ammunition. And I think we can agree that there's barely a difference between the two uh, groups. I mean, yeah, obviously the faster group is a little bit larger, but for, for realism's sake, uh, they're both very, very effective groups. And if you put that group on any region of the human body as far as self-defense shooting goes, you would get yourself an incapacitation, any critical region of the human body, I should say. Now let's see what happens at five yards. So here's my control group, Shire, fired at five yards. Remember, as soon as the dot stabilizes, goes back to natural movement, I'm pressing the shot. Five point seven four seconds from five yards, pretty respectable baseline. What I wanna do now, and this is where some people kinda of struggle, especially getting back to five, and when I say some people, I have a very large sample size. I teach a lot of red dot classes, both citizen, law enforcement. So I see a lot of shooters from a lot of different experience levels, a lot of different backgrounds, and varied time on iron sights, sights or red dots. Some people have a lot of shooting experience in general, but not so much handgun or red dot or iron sight. So here's that group fired at cadence. As soon as the dot is in an acceptable place for me to get a shot, I'm pressing that shot. Two point three three, and you'll notice that's slightly longer than the group I fired at three yards. So I am taking slightly more time, even though I am having, I am experiencing a slightly wider shot group. But if the standard is still a zone, I'm still meeting that standard. Some people may get a little cringy, like, "Oh, that group's too wide." Consider how fast I fired ten rounds of ammunition. Two point three three seconds. I'm not saying I'm the fastest, but 
I'm able to deliver 10 rounds of ammunition to a four by six inch box at five yards in under three seconds. That's cadence. Now let's see what happens as we move back one more time again to that seven yard distance. First up is my control group. I'm gonna fire 10 rounds administratively. As soon as the dot stabilizes, I'm gonna press the shot. So 10 rounds in 5.3 seconds. Uh, obviously uh, a little strange if you think about it because that's a little bit less time than it took me at five yards. I think mainly the reason for this, and this is something I consistently see, is the dot is larger in relation to the target. At that distance, the dot covers more of where my bullet holes are going, even though I'm looking through them and looking for my desired point of aim. Uh, so as soon as I see the red dot settle on where those rounds have hit, I just press the shot. There's no fine tuning taking place. Now I could bring my dot brightness down and make a correction for that, but I'm still happy with the results. I was able to fire 10 rounds of ammunition in 5.3 seconds and not only stay in the A zone, but still shoot a respectable group. Now let's see what happens when I shoot cadence from seven yards. Ten rounds in 2.41 seconds. You'll notice the group did open up. It's a little left and there's definitely a lot of vertical deviation there. The cool thing about vertical deviation is it tells me it's most likely sight picture and settling related. As that gun settles, I'm not necessarily bringing it back to that same default point of aim when I'm pressing that next shot because the gun is constantly in motion and energy from recoil because I'm shooting so fast. I only fired uh, just under a tenth of a second f uh, slower than I did at five yards when I was at seven. So at five yards, I was 2.33. At seven yards, I was 2.41. Of course, the question can be asked, well, if you slowed down just a little bit, would you shoot a tighter group? And I think the answer is that, of course I would. However, it's very hard for me to, and it's very hard for many shooters to be like, okay, I'm gonna slow down a 10th of a second. Uh, we tend to, in our minds, not really measure time as, as accurately as that and relate it to our physical techniques. But now we've established some bright line distances and bright line performances, at least for my shooting ability, uh, for what I'm doing for cadence purposes. Now, what do we do with this information? Now that we've got these shot groups, so now we're just gonna look at the fast times. We're gonna look at that three yard at 2.14, that five yard at 2.33, and that seven yard at 2.41. As you see, they get a little bit longer every single time because it takes me long to process. We're gonna take those times and those shot groups and use those as our diagnostics for what we should be working on, not only with our cadence skill, but the skills it takes us to actually shoot cadence. Looking at those groups side by side, you may notice there is some consistency in them as we get further back. There's vertical and horizontal deviation. Horizontal deviation is attributable to grip, some kind of unequal pressure taking place in the technique, allowing the gun to go one way or the other. My opinion on handguns especially is they are real wheel drive. So if the grip is loose on the left or loose on the right, the muzzle's gonna torque in the opposite direction. So if I've got a loose left hand, I may be able to push the gun in that direction, or my other hand's gonna overcompensate and drive it the other direction. It all depends on what kind of terrain we're talking about. Trigger could be a factor. However, generally, if someone's having trigger control problems for accuracy, it's grip related because their platform isn't stable enough and it's allowing the trigger to cause that disturbance. Uh, as far as vertical goes, this is very a very aggravating thing about human nature and the fact that once I process visually and tell my finger to pull the trigger, I see my red dot settle and I'm like, go bullet, go. That signal takes time to travel down to my trigger finger. And it's, a, it's an actual measurable amount of time. There is, there's a measurement there and it's infinitesimal, but it could be just enough time for the dot to move past or left or right or above of where you actually said to pull the trigger. So that's when you start to get deviation. The faster you shoot, the less time you have to settle that reticle, the more the deviation is gonna be. So how do you overcome that? Well, I'm gonna show you the trick that I use for developing cadence skills. Uh, and it's very simple, all it takes is a black marker. Here's a target you're pretty familiar with at this point in the video and probably watching my channel in general. So I got my reduced size A-Zone, four by six box. And what I do is I give myself a little black point of aim. You can't see it anymore. I put a little circle there about a, usually I use an inch circle, sometimes smaller depending on distance or bigger depending on distance. Uh, my margin of error is my A-Zone and then I graph it. And the closer I am, the closer I want the lines together. Because the whole purpose of these lines is so I can consciously pay attention to my dot's arc of travel, its bounce, 
Uh, of course, big clue, you've seen videos I talk about diagnostics in the past. Ideally, it should be bouncing up and coming right back down. It shouldn't be leaving the window with a two-handed grip, depending on you know, how much skill you got in it, what kind of ammo you're shooting, length of the gun, things like that. Uh, but what I'm looking for is how many lines up it goes and how many lines it takes for it to come back down and if it ever settles below, drastically below, my desired point of aim. So you can see from the heat map here that my point of aim was where that nice big hole is. But I've got a large deviation. This is 30 rounds of ammunition. So I've got a really good consistent heat map of what my performance is like during this process. And what I'm trying to do with that mental timing is breaking the shot when the dot touches the very top of the earliest place I would put a bullet. So if we're talking about the very top of the A zone, I'm trying to break the shot when the dot touches that very top line. Because I'm not a machine, doesn't always happen. And as you can see, I've got a couple hits up here on the line. I've got two up here. These are both failures. I like the word failure. I like to say, hey, you failed. Uh, some little bit of negative reinforcement never hurt. Well, I won't say never hurt anybody. It hurts a lot of people. It's not gonna hurt my feelings and hopefully it won't hurt yours either because you can't learn through constantly lucking your way into success. So overall, I'm meeting the goal, but the more attentive you are to the graph, the more you will see the discrepancy between when you say pull the trigger and when the trigger actually gets pulled. The greatest thing about the red dot is it just makes you a better shooter overall, especially in the handgun rifles too, but on the handgun, it really reinforces all those techniques that you have to apply because a handgun is just much more, it takes a lot more conscious attention to develop the skill because it's just a harder firearm to shoot versus a rifle. Uh, that's just, of course, my professional opinion, but I see people pick up rifle more intuitively, quicker uh, than handgun. Handgun can be a bit of a struggle, and there's always, you know, people who are going to feel differently, and that's okay. So, how effective can the graph be? Depends on where you take it. Depends on how you use it and depends on what you view to be acceptable accuracy. If you want to go fast for a diagnostic purpose, it's going to improve your grip and your ability to get hits on target in the smallest amount of time possible. How far back can you take cadence? Once I get back to 10 yards, I have to be honest with myself. If I want to be able to shoot quicker, I have to start accepting the occasional B zone hit. If I want to stay all in the A at 10 yards, I'm going to have to slow it down and let the dot settle a little bit more. Once I get back to 15, cadence isn't really even on the menu unless I'm gonna accept a lot of B zone hits. But here's the cool thing about the B zone, the A zone's always in the middle of it. So if I'm thinking about anatomy, if I'm getting high thoracic hits and I'm still trying to shoot center of the high thoracic, most of my rounds, more than likely than not, are gonna hit that A zone even though I'm still getting hits in the B zone. With a handgun, once I get back to 20, 25, cadence isn't really a thing anymore because I'm not a machine. Human factors really come into play and I've got to let the sight picture stabilize to even get it sometimes even back in the B zone in order to try to get an A zone hit. So cadence isn't something you're gonna take with you at all distances and that's why like in the beginning of the video I said shoot as fast as possible, not as fast as you can. So when I get back to 25, I'm still gonna shoot as fast as possible but my possible at 25 is nowhere near what my possible at three is. I'm Aaron Count with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.